All of a sudden, here is Joe Camilla talking about brain waves and alpha brain waves, and the fact that he had discovered a few years earlier that humans could, if given appropriate feedback, learn to voluntarily control their own alpha brain waves. Well, this was revolutionary because nobody had ever tried to do feedback on brain waves. They thought they were autonomic function and incapable of voluntary control. But here is this Japanese American researcher who as a little boy was actually in an internment camp in California during World War II. The Japanese were rounded up and put into basically concentration camps because they were considered a security risk. And so he had kind of accidentally stumbled on this. And uh, I was fascinated. I uh, began a correspondence with him. And meanwhile, every spare minute, I went to the library and found and read everything I could find on brainwaves. I exhausted uh, uh, my nickel supply every day, uh, Xeroxing uh, articles going back into the first publication. Brainwaves were discovered, alpha brainwaves were discovered in 1908 by uh, her doctor, Dr. Hans Berger, an Austrian psychiatrist, who was actually looking for the basis of ESP because of a cool experience that he had had when he was in one of those interminable wars uh, of the Austro-Hungarian Empire fighting uh, Muslims in the Crimea and his horse was shot and fell on him and broke his leg and he spent long months in a military hospital. When he got back to Vienna, called the family together to recount what had happened. Of course, there being no cell phones or emails to tell folks what was going on. He was halfway through a story and his sister uh, pulled him away, took him to her bedroom, showed him her Tage book, her diary, in which she had written everything that he had said. So she was obviously telepathic or psychic. And so he now believed in this and went looking using a very primitive form of technology. And the first waves he found were they called alpha because they were first. They're not the fastest and they're not the slowest, but they're the biggest, which is why he found them first. So his first, he kept it a secret for 10 years, finally published in 1918. And I actually got that original paper in German and with a dictionary and a lot of time I actually read that first paper in German. So then I go through the fall and spring semesters, I graduate and I, with a degree in physics and I jump on my Triumph motorcycle and I ride up into Canada, across the Trans-Canadian Highway, down I-5 to San Francisco, and I report at Joe's lab, and I volunteer for an uh, experiment. Very primitive. Uh, he had a dilapidated house at the edge of campus. A bedroom uh, was filled with a large digital equipment corp, PDP-15 mini computer, mini, I mean, it was like, gigantic. Um, and the chamber, the feedback chamber was a bedroom off, uh, it was a closet off the bedroom lined with sound tiles uh, with a, a hard wooden chair upright, uh, a Nixie tube display with three digits uh, to give digital feedback once every two minutes. And in the corner on an, of the closet on an orange crate sat a large one foot speaker with torn speaker paper. And that was the feedback chamber. And it was the most fascinating thing I had ever done in my life. Uh, there would be a surge in tones and my rational mind would go, rawr, 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 rawr. what was that? How did I do it? How can I keep it going? And of course the tone would recede and I'd settle back and you know, my mind would quiet and the tone would come again. And my rational mind, as it had been so trained to do through all those years of education would go, rawr, rawr, rawr. how did I do that? How can I keep it going? Rawr, rawr. And it would recede. And so over time I learned to like put a leash on that aspect of my mind. And when the tone would come on, it would want to go like that, but I would like restrain it for a half a second or with practice a full second or two seconds, which meant the tone, the alpha could get bigger and bigger. And I had three days of that in a row. It was fascinating. And I went back on the fourth day, very eager to have more, but they weren't doing any studies. So I uh, had I'd become friends with Joe's San Francisco girlfriend, Joanne Gardner, who later became his wife. And I went to her office. I said, Joanne, would you take me downstairs and put a few electrodes on me and hook me up so I can play? And she goes, oh, sure. And so she did that. Put me in the chamber, started the system, went upstairs, got involved in her work. I forgot I was there. Later, lunchtime came, and she and nine other people 
piled into Paul Gorman's VW camper van and went out to a 12 course Chinese lunch. And in course 11, she goes, oh my God, <laughs> there's somebody in the chamber. And they all pile back into the VW camper van, go hurling across town, run up the building, rip open the door and interrupt the later stages of a most incredible adventure in which I had that out of body experience. Now, mind you, I had gone into that chamber as a physics major with a very well-trained rational mind. And my only spiritual training had been as a, uh, a Protestant fundamentalist, Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, one of the most fundamentalist branches of Lutheranism. And so I was completely unprepared for what I experienced in there. I could probably spell the word meditation, but I had no clue what it was. So I was having out of body experience. I was flying around the universe. I was meeting up with just corporate entities. Uh, it was a gas. It was absolutely blissful, more blissful than I could put into words. And then the door is ripped open and there's 10 people standing there and they want to know, well, what happened? And so as I start to tell what happened, you know, fresh from the experience, Paul Gorman, who with his wife in that VW camper van had toured India the summer before, would say, oh, that's a meditation experience. And I'd say something else, oh, that's a meditation experience. And so mm, I was so high that when I walked around for the next three days, it was my feet didn't touch the ground. I was like 18 inches off the ground. 